Hey there ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another epic epic episode here with me Sheldon. Uh, today we are chatting to our week 32 top DJ winner who was crowned with that title last week by your amazing votes. And also he had quite a hectic run with our ultimate South African DJ winner. So yeah, uh, this DJ's name is Chalso Fabri. A lot of you might know him. Um, he is from the Western Cape and he loves his Deep House music. So yeah, we're going to get adding him now onto the show as soon as he joins up. But just a little bit more about him. To be honest, uh, Charles so was actually is in a school uh, that I attended back way back when. But uh, yeah, so big ups to the Priory. Priory is really giving out some much needed love there. So yeah, let's add Charles so now. Connection. In the meantime, I hope you guys are all having fun with this uh, live interviews that we're doing. We're really enjoying the shit out of it. <laughs> hey, how's it, man? Yo, can you hear me? That's it. Hey. Ah, no complain, bro. Come complain. Like it, like it, like it. Good to hear. Yo, yo. You go to Okay, sweet, sweet. So how's it going, man? Uh, it's going like a man, going like a, going well. <laughs> Can't complain about anything, you know, we're currently in the middle of trials, but uh, otherwise, you know, not too... Oh, sure. Bro. Nothing's going too bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's... Uh, bro, trials in prior is never fun, eh? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you are such a thing. at all, definitely. Yeah, no, look. <laughs> Especially with the IV systems there. But uh, yeah. yeah, so um, tell us more about what this, what made you decide to get into the the, the DJ career path. So um, I've always been musical. You know, my dad has been in the music scene for thirty plus years, thirty five years, whatever. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, so since then, he I've kind of since I came out the womb, I was just blasted with music, like rock music and stuff, <laughs> because he's a drummer. So. Um, <laughs> But in grade eight, uh, there was a school social and um, I got like, they were like, yo, we'll give you like 10 minutes or whatever because I wanted to try and, you know, um, DJ at the social. And yeah. then after my 10 minutes, the next DJ came on and like, <laughs> and this sounds terrible, but the whole school, school like booed this guy off. The oh, no, shit. And then I went back on and I played like the rest of the night. So then after that, I was like, yo, something's going right. Oh, that's so I cool. then that I was going to pursue this, you know? Yeah. So yeah, that's kind of the, the beginnings of it. Oh, that's really cool, man. Um, that's quite a cool way to start as well. And to know that, because it's always, as one of my mentors, Gary Vee, always says that when the market reacts, you know you're doing something good. So yeah, yeah, I had something yeah, different for sure. sure. Yeah, yeah, man. they were definitely so. They came on the stage and they were playing like the super bass, like like hectic music. And when you're in high school, you're not really into that stuff. You know, it's only really after high school you you yeah. open. So I came on and I was playing basically the stuff that I enjoyed and I knew it was different. So it started working and I was quite like you know chuffed that the people oh. liked what I was playing. And then you know I kind of decided yeah, to yeah. pursue music after that yeah oh, that's really cool man so i just want to say to everyone that's in here at the moment you'll see right at the bottom of your screen next to the comment section there's a question button if you guys click on that you can ask us any questions i'll throw it up on screen here and i'll ask charles so the question i'm saying your name right awesome charles so hey yeah, Chalso, yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, a lot of people, they yeah, say Salso. So, guys, it's not Salso. Salso, Kelso, okay, all of it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, awesome. So, um, how many outdoor or indoor gigs have you played so far in your DJ career? Um, in grade nine, my first ever gig, actually, proper gig, was uh, they had an under-18 event for Carl Watson. And I uh, oh, phoned cool. up the organizer, and I was like, yo, like, um, I'm just starting up. I played like a school social. People dig what I was playing. If I could get like the opening spot, that would be awesome and stuff. And it's actually an OG. Like I would call him an OG. His name is Mornay Monroe. And he's yeah. really an OG of, uh, OG of like the music scene in PE. So he gave me a slot and I sent him a mix first. And he was like, yo, I dig you. You know, you're playing this 
like music out there, what you're playing, whatever. And then he put me on that lineup and it was quite, yeah, I really just enjoyed myself there. And then from then, I just carried on boating. But after, I think grade nine, I really took a gap of playing the events and I went more into private gigs, which is like birthdays, stuff like that, just to, because they, they make more money. As, <laughs> as real as <laughs> they make more money. So yeah. after that, then I started to buy my own equipment. Then I started like um, making, producing my own sound. And I got an, uh, a, uh, I got an interview on Algo FM, which is like the main radio station in PE. And I got an interview there and they played my track and like stuff like that. And then, uh, yeah, <laughs> um, <laughs> since then I took, I took a bit of a break, you know, um, but then this year again, I've started pushing my sound again and I've started appearing in a lot um, of places and my producing has really stepped up a notch, you know? Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's the story that, so I, I would say for outdoor events, I played at, there's, there's a regular thing that happens in PE called uh, food truck fun day. Uh, which yeah. is like a whole bunch of food trucks get together yes. and then they have like DJs and stuff. And then it's a whole vibe that like starts at around five ish ends at around nine. Yeah. And then, uh, indoor, indoor events. There's just, yo, there's so many, <laughs> <laughs> I can't really pick out individual ones. There. There's a lot of them. Yeah. No. Yeah. I was actually chatting to, um, a guy by the name of Nick Gregorio, Nicholas Gregorio. He's, uh, oh, yeah, he's Strosity, Strosity. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I think yeah, that 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 we should yeah. have a team take over Joburg event sometime so that we can get you guys <laughs> up this so, side. For sure, yeah, I'll come with Nick. Nick is such a cool guy. No, shout yeah, out but he's actually cool having guy. his show on now currently at the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, yeah. he's playing for that Chanda event. At yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, so we actually have a couple questions that came in here. So before I go to my next question, let's see here. Um, all right. So Georgia Madison asks, goal of 2019. Goal of 2019. Yo, I mean, 2019 is almost over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I would say my goal that I made in 2019 is that next year I want to be on a lineup of a big event in PE that's called Air Force One. Now, this features artists oh, yes. like Dawson, Pierre Johnson, uh, Lazarus, man, like big South African artists. And mm. uh, I actually had a meeting yesterday, which went really well. So that means that that, uh, <laughs> that, could, be, that could be coming true very soon, which I'm oh, very awesome. excited about, you know? Uh, maybe yeah, yeah, that's basically... Can you use some details big here yeah, on Thistles for you, side. <laughs> 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 if I get something confirmed, for sure, yeah, no. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> but that's so, my goal, yeah. Air Force One is definitely my goal. Oh, that's awesome, man. So um, another question came in from Fabish Gavinder asking, any future tracks album dropping anytime soon? Yeah, Tavish. Um, so obviously, I just had an EP signed to a record label called Deepfoot, which is a record label that signed Deep Pass artists such as Dawson has a single out there. Uh, Skivo collaborates with them. Skivo is actually another 18-year-old Deep House producer from Joburg who's appeared on like 5FM and stuff. He's doing really mm. well, well for himself. And I have an EP out there which consists of two tracks, which is Energy that you played on the Instagram yesterday. And the other one is called Glass mm. Wars, which is a more, yeah, uh, I would say like Deep House track that's going to come out. So it's a two-track EP. Then after that, we have... Uh, a, a remix EP, which is where they ask artists on their label to remix the yeah. track and then release oh, an cool. EP of all of the remixes. I'm very excited for that. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. Very excited. That's definitely going to be banging. I mean, this last one that I've yeah, played for sure. um, was quite intense. So, yeah, and your mix. <laughs> oh, by the way, guys, for everyone that is tuned in, if you haven't yet, go check out Charles's, uh epic mix that he made for us as well. Um, it's available on our mix cloud. And yeah. We also feature all of the tracks that he has in that mix. So, 100%, um, yeah, that's basically what I'm feeling. <laughs> Hell yeah. So, uh, in which province have you played the most indoor and outdoor gigs so far? Uh, Eastern Cape, for sure. I've played in PE. I've played in St. Francis. You know, um, haven't really restarted J-Bay as of yet, but I haven't moved into other provinces Yes, but I'm in contact with uh, people in Cape Town, even people in Maputo in uh, Mozambique. Oh. Uh, oh. Contact, yeah. So uh, as soon as I start, I'm, I don't feel like I'm ready yet to push out into other provinces. I really want to make myself a house name in mm. PE and then start to push out, you know, board on my brand like that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's quite cool. You must definitely maybe look at um, 
the Dry Bay Rage because that would be quite interesting. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I'm going there in December, funny enough. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I went to the yeah, yeah. one. That was quite a lot of fun. <laughs> but, yeah. I believe it, yeah. Yeah, so um, what was your best gig to date that you've had so far? Your best gig. I actually did think about this. Um, purely because of sentiment, like the, just because it's sentimental, I'll have to say my school social that I played this year was just, just because it's like where I started. So to like make it a place where I like end my school, like, I don't know, DJing thing or whatever. I think yeah. that's, it was quite sentimental to me. But um, yeah, I've had a lot of great, one of my favorites uh, as an honorable mention, I would say there's a big event called Selective Sundays and Selective Fridays in PE. And uh, there was a Selective Sundays event where my set time got like muddled up and I had to end up asking one of the DJs if I could take like 15 minutes of their time. And then the next um, one asking if I could take 15 minutes so I could just make a half an hour set. And uh, uh, when yeah. I came on this guy, I was playing like, um, I would say like lounge like really chilled music and then I came on and I started playing a set and the yeah. crowd was empty but within five minutes I played a track yeah. called Gong Gong and within five minutes that whole floor was completely full and <laughs> I've never been so overwhelmed by seeing people like just out of nowhere I didn't even think there were that many people sitting around but that whole oh, yeah. event filled up within five minutes and I think that's <laughs> one of my favorite experiences yeah, yeah let's see Oh, that's really awesome, man. And I can just imagine that kind of feeling that uh, when there's a list that no one on the crowd, and you know, all of a sudden, yeah, just, and then all of a sudden, everyone just comes, just, yeah. yeah, it must be quite an admiration kind of feeling. But yeah, a few <laughs> more questions came in here. So, um, yeah, Liam asked uh, Liam Free. Now, for those of you that don't know, G Chord is currently part of our. Um, uh, our brand festivals for you and Liam asks would you ever collab with G Chord well I think you know G Chord but does he make his own music I don't even know to be honest. yeah yeah so currently he is working in his own uh, music productions as well so I definitely maybe try and hook that up between you two guys because that would be quite <laughs> for sure like, yeah. I'm, I'm open to all collabs man for sure Hell yeah. I mean, if, you're on, if, if you're making stuff that I like for sure you know there's nothing that would stop me from collabing so never awesome. know, maybe you might see Chelsea Fabs featuring G Core 2020 you never know <laughs> Hell yeah so um, Asa dot Okay, I can't say that surname. Totobe, Totobe. Totobe, yeah. Sweet, thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, would you ever consider helping out DJs that are trying to figure out their sound? Yes, I actually, um, a lot of people hit me up in the DMs and stuff because, and they'll send me their mix links and like tracks that they've been producing on and stuff. But um, a lot of the time, it's you can see that uh, the only thing that's lacking is a bit of musical, like theory background, like to know mm -hmm. your chords and to know like your music keys and stuff like that. That's the only thing that I really tell people to do. But otherwise, if people are trying to find their sound, I can't influence that. You know, you have to find it on your own and you yeah. have to um, build on what you like and then keep building on top of that and keep finding better tracks, better tracks. And then eventually your mixes will be on another level, you know, and your producing also improves. Every track you push out, you know, gets better than the last one. So, yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's what I got told by, that's what, I actually hit up uh, a, a very well-known producer called Dawson. Yeah. And he listened to my first EP, which isn't even out anymore. <laughs> and he was like, yeah, no, I dig this aspect. You know, he was like, yeah, I like the drum programming. And he just gave me tips on like what plugins I should be drifting towards. And he's really such a humble guy. I love talking to him and stuff. And I know I probably annoy a lot of people with my <laughs> messages, but really that's just to ground and try and get my sound out there. You know, that's yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, and it's always nice to get some feedback, even if it's, um, like just telling you, like, listen, maybe change this or um, maybe tweak this a little bit. You know, you, any feedback is good feedback, you know. So, but the thing is, what I find also is that a lot of people they too scared of criticism. You know, they don't want to be told that yeah, maybe they practice true. shit or you know something like that. So, you know, at the end of the day, it's also all about yourself, um, your self motivation, and also like how you are as a person, you know, if you can handle that kind of criticism, then it's good, you know. Yeah, I think you're gonna, if, if you're gonna go into this industry, you're gonna have to learn 
to take criticism because if I hadn't listened to any of the criticism, I, I would not be nearly as booked as much as I am because criticism also teaches you um, skills to, to deal with people when they are mm. criticizing you. You know, you have to know how to respond to it and you have to know how to improve yourself, like take the criticism and actually adapt from it. So yeah, yeah. criticism is definitely a positive in my opinion to get. Exactly. It. I oh, know that's awesome, man. So, if there was one thing you would change about the South African music industry, what would it be? Yo, one thing. Okay, so out of one thing, I would say, yo, what would I say? Um, there's a very specific sound that I feel like each city has. Um, has like, you know, you can you can you can tell that a songs come from a certain city, in my opinion. Mm. And I feel like some of the stuff like there's a lot of PE sound and there's a lot of especially Joburg uh, people making music that don't get recognized as much as I feel like they deserve to be recognized for but there's yeah. also a lot of people that feel like they should be recognized and in my opinion I'm like no dude <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah I would say uh, I would say to be more open-minded at events that's the one thing because when people go to events it's like you want to hear the songs you know. And in my opinion, it's like, would you go to a comedy show where you know all the jokes? You know yes, what I mean? Yeah. So, um, the, uh, yeah, I feel like the events that I enjoy the most are where you don't even know that, you can't even Shazam the songs <laughs> because oh, yeah, they're just yeah. so fresh. And, and you, you, you enter the event not knowing what to expect and you leave the event not even knowing what you listen to. I think those are my favorites because they're just <laughs> putting onto a platform the sounds that don't get as much attention as the commercial sounds. That's what I would say. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no. And for everyone that's in the comments section, how's it to everyone? We are looking at your chats, don't worry. And um, yeah, so for everyone that doesn't know yet, if you look at the bottom of your screen, you'll see right next to the comment section, you can ask the questions there. I'll be able to throw them up like we're actually going to ask one now. So um, let's see here. Favorite people to be in the studio with? From Liam again. Well, I'm going to have to say, I'm going to have to say Amy. <laughs> um, <laughs> actually, how Amy and I started as a, as like a duo, I would say, is that actually we have a matric group and I was making tracks at the time, but I, like they were missing something and that something was vocal. So I was like, does anyone want to make, you know, some money um, singing on the, on some tracks? And, uh, and Amy hit me up and she was like, yes, I would do it. And then, so uh, I had a beat and I sent it to Amy and then actually funny enough, while I was in the shower, I was like washing my hair and I thought of the first line of the track and then boarding, boarding, and then that track became oh, wow. Eyes on You, which got crazy attention. Like I've never seen something that I did on so many statuses and like stories and stuff in my life. <laughs> so Amy, yeah, Amy, for sure. She's, she's also really funny to have in the studio. You know, if I come up with like a stupid line or something, we'll make a yeah. joke out of it. and It'll be such a joy, you know? You don't get bored. <laughs> is, yeah. But it's always great to have someone like that, especially someone that helps you out in your tracks and stuff. And that For can, sure, like... yeah. And she's also really focused, you know. She's really focused, like, when she... Uh, on our latest song, Energy, we laid, we, we recorded, we had one session and we recorded, like, the first like version and um, then she was like pestering me for ages like when are we going to do the second one and it's so great to have someone that, that's as focused as you are you know on trying yes. to produce something yeah exactly yeah. it's really awesome man so who would you say is your mentor in your dj career um mentor oh well there's people that i hit up for advice a lot which are advent uh message mm. a lot on instagram and uh, James actually helped me with energy to like master it and stuff oh, and get cool. it sounding good. And uh, Dawson, I always hit up uh, in the DMs as well. And he helped, he helped me with a lot of how the way my drums and percussion sound in my songs today, because I didn't realize how, impo how important like um, percussion and drums were in a song. And yeah. so he pointed out to me that that's what he bases his songs on, you know? And uh, there's like Pia Johnson, just listening to his tracks and stuff. These are really like, in my opinion, the underground artists of SA yeah. who really are making sick music. Like, like the, the just the connection you have with their music, well, that connection that I have with their music is unreal. Like, I, I just love it. Yeah. So oh, I would say really Dawson, James, Advent. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, no, and I saw Dawson was featured uh, twice in your mix there that you 
Kijk eventjes. Ja, ja, ja. Nee. Ja, zo. Ja, even die hier ik hem heb, as well as uh, uh, Lazarus Man as well. It'd be quite cool to I like him, yeah. His vocals are super sick. Actually, yeah. there's a track coming out on a record label called Glass Walls. And I'm getting uh, someone in my school that's actually a rapper. He goes by Teach. His name is Teach the Artist. And uh, um, he's going to like do one of those spoken verse tracks on the song, which I'm really excited for. I think it's going to add a whole new dy- dynamic, yeah. Oh, shit. Hey, that's quite cool. So, um, uh, all right. So, it's time for our Instagram deep dive. Now, many of you might know this. Ooh, I've been ready for this. So, we basically have taken a picture from your Instagram. And you have to tell us what's yeah. going on in this picture. All right. You ready for this? Okay, for sure. Okay. I'm ready, yeah. All right. So, tell us what's happening here, Bri. <laughs> oh, that is from our, my last high school gala. <laughs> Funny enough, so, uh, so you're a swimmer. Photographer, no, I, I was just like everyone had to like kind of participate. So uh-huh. there's a photographer in our school called Lisa Terblanche. Lisa Dot Terblanche. She's a really good photographer. You should actually hit her up. And uh, I was sitting on the bench and I'd just taken my goggles off. And then I looked to the side and I saw a camera pointed at my face. And I didn't even think, I, I thought it was pointed at the person in front of me. So I just like gave a big <laughs> smile to like photobomb it. And then she sent me the photo later and yeah. I was just like, whoa, that's such a cheesy <laughs> smile. And then I just uploaded that like as soon as I could. Yeah, I really liked it. <laughs> yeah, no, it was just, a good just, photo. Like, photo made me think about how happy I was when I, when I took it. So yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, oh, that was my favorite. But it's quite cool. Oh, that's awesome, man. So another question came in from yeah, our previous week's um, uh, The Groove Sesh uh, from Sochweb. And yeah, he's a producer and DJ from the Western Cape. Yeah, so sure. Yeah, so I've asked... been listening to So Shui since I was in like grade eight. No, much. Yeah, much <laughs> That's very so much love. So yeah, he actually asked you, how do you deal with distractions and stay focused? Oh, I mean, he would probably know as well. There's a lot of distractions in the music industry. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of like, I would say like unprofessional people in this industry there's a lot of people um for events there's a lot of people that just uh feel like events are easy and they don't know how to do it properly and then you play at these events and you just get treated like terribly and stuff like that and uh there's there's other like people that just hit you up for collabs when they clearly just know nothing about collabing and stuff but um yeah i know there's as as long as you stay away from and and focus focus on where you want to be instead of uh, what you've done in the past because a lot of people uh, uh, I know a lot of people personally that organize the big events in PE and they say a lot of the people that hit them up are just like you yeah, I've opened for this guy I've opened for him I've opened for Chanda Monkey I've opened for Carlos and whatever yeah. but um some advice that I got is that you want to market yourself to be someone that gets opened for in like three or four years. So, I mean, I yeah, would say yeah. what's keeping me focused is to stay away from the just watering yourself down and being on every single lineup and more select yourself mm. um, to be, you know, to, you, people should be thirsty for your sets rather than just be sick of seeing you on every single lineup. Yes. So, I mean, I would be focused on trying to market myself to be above my competition, you know, to be uh, sought after. That's mm. that's what I would say. That's that's I, I would try to stay focused on that. And you know, simple things like be on time for your sets. Don't be drunk when you're on sets because that's a that's a big thing. A lot of people are just yeah. completely drunk and then they don't get booked again. And um, yeah, that's that's what I would focus on. To be honest, I mean, so yeah, no, that's <laughs> knows that... way more than me. But that's just me personally. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that that is the truth, though. Like you have to respect the industry that you're in. You know, you can't rock up half drunk or even rude or like, yeah, yeah. Um, that kind of stuff to the person that booked you, you know, because at the end of the day, that kind of shit gets out. And when that shit does get out, you know, yeah. you're not going to end up being booked. So it's better just to be sure. kind, be humble, and appreciate everything that you're given, you know, that kind of stuff. So yeah. And like rather, than, rather than trying to be someone, I would say rather than trying to be someone who just rocks up, catches their check and then leaves afterwards, you know, Mm. I've built a lot of good, solid relationships with the events companies that I've played at, which is why I get booked at these events again and again. Is because it's all about the people skills and the relationships, not really yes. about trying to like go up there, spin some knobs, and then go off. That's not how you get booked again and again. It's it's about building relationships. Exactly. 
Oh yeah. So if you had to pick one song for 2019 that has just like blown your mind, what has it been? Your one song? <laughs> yeah. Um, that makes it difficult. <laughs> it does. It makes it very difficult because I listen to a lot of genres. <laughs> um, All right, we can. Yeah, I would say one track that really. Oh, how, could we make it like three? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But they give okay, me okay. in three different so, genres. Yeah, yeah three, three different. Okay, so there's a genre that I'm really liking at the moment called Afrotech, and that's what Euphonic is making under his new alias, which is Temba. And oh, yes. there's a song that my mate Tavesh, who asked the question earlier, sent me called Who is Temba? And it's, yo, when you sit down and just focus on that song from start to finish, that song blew my mind. Like, just the way he brings the energy in and out of the track was absolutely insane. I mean, that um, yeah, that Afrotech. And then out of, uh, okay, the next track's going to have to be either Pia Johnson or Dawson, but I'm just going to say Pia Johnson. Um, it's a oh, track yeah. that he made uh, with Sook's called Everything, which is also mm. that like Afrotech kind of vibe. But um, no, I mean, I would say that Who Is Timber song definitely trumped it in my opinion. And uh, I would say Dawson's track called Forbidden. Um, absolutely insane. The, the first time I, I heard the song was in a video that one of my mates put on his status. And I was just like, track ID, like I need the song, I need the song. <laughs> and it's been in so many of my sets and stuff that I, I just fell in love with it. Um, and then one more genre completely is uh, FKA Mash. I, I don't even know what you'd call it genre, to be honest. I, don't, oh, I, yes. I would say like Deep House, but... The yes, song yeah. called Deja Vu, which is in my mix called uh, yes. yeah, yeah, which is in my mix called Trib Tribute to Air Force One. That song called Deja Vu, definitely my favorite. So yeah, I man. would say, um, Who is Timber? Uh, that Pierre John, everything. Uh, I mean, Who is Timber? Then Deja Vu, and then afterwards Forbidden. I'd say those are my favorites. Awesome. Oh, that's very good answers. And I must say, did you check out the yeah. Carl Watson also? Did a mix mag um, tribute to Africa. Yeah, hundred yeah, well, so, percent. Yeah. yeah, so that, it's so cool seeing that he has that he's adapting his his you know style. Even uh, Timo ODV's whole new album is is Afrotech, which oh, that's I, like when I first heard the song, I was like, whoa, Timo is like knows about the stuff. Which uh, yeah, yeah, oh, I, was, I was super. I love his album. Yeah, it's really cool to see how um, people are like aware that there is like this hype around certain genres you know and it's not just like yeah you know under the radar it's not know? all just so that really bass house cool. stuff yeah you can you know, yeah open your... <laughs> exactly so i actually released you just... a new mix oh wait karen karen yeah no 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 <laughs> it's fine about the mix later oh yeah yeah that's that comes at the end yeah so uh official cool. con conlan karaoke <laughs> asked uh, how did you find your passion how did I find you? I mean, since I was like four, I was playing drums. <laughs> so there's a video of me on like my dad's Facebook when I was four year old playing drums. And uh, since then, beats with like um, hectic attention to drums in them really could catch my attention. Like, um, although, you know, uh, it, you, you can get like under fire for it. I play, there's some sets I play bomb and I'm a piano, which although are not the most favorable, you know, genres, they really yeah. are energetic, right? So mm -hmm. just because of the drums and, and then um, now recently this year and last year, I've really been into Deep House, which is more, like insane. Drum. There's an artist called Edward, whose drums are so ethnic and like so real that I just fell in love with how oh. like, I don't know how they just hit you. <laughs> they just hit you in your face and you just can't ignore them. So I just really fell in love with drums. So since then, like a lot of my beats, you'll hear energy and stuff. There's a lot of drum programming. Yeah. And as on you, there's a lot of different drum programming and like shakers mm. and percussion and stuff. That's really what my passion is. Yeah. That's really awesome, man. So um, tell your fans one thing they probably didn't know about you other than the two genres that you already mentioned here. That you had previously played. Oh, one thing that okay, they probably don't know that I have a huge ACDC and Led Zeppelin album on my phone. Um, so although when I play my sets, I'll play Deep House or whatever, like hip hop, especially I like hip hop sets. Yeah, you can mix it in. But um, yeah, I have a huge ACDC pro like <laughs> playlist on my phone. That that hard rock stuff. I really, uh, yeah, really when cool, I'm in the mood, 
I'll clap that playlist. Yeah, yeah you've got the hairstyle to do some fucking head bang. <laughs> yeah, yeah when, when I grow my hair long, for sure. Yeah, back. exactly. But <laughs> well, you can't now, though, because prior is strict on that shit. <laughs> yeah, look, I've been doing that. doesn't even go to my eyebrows. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, okay, before we give you your plug, is there anything else that you want to tell the fans about yourself? Yeah, I released a mix last night, which is one of my... I was so nervous to release this mix, I'm not going to lie, because it's all underground stuff that I've collected, you know, over the course of this year. And then I pushed all that underground stuff into a mix. And uh, it's gotten way more positive feedback than I thought it was going to get, you know. Like, a lot of people just want to hear the tracks they know, so they, you know, recognize it. But this mix was all about embracing the underground stuff and the stuff that's not really that known. Um, okay. But other than that, there's, uh, like, if I can give a quick gig guide. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Got, on the 24th of April, there's an event at New Asia called uh, Trap, uh, the Fab, Trap Edition, which is just trap music and, like, crazy stuff, so I can't wait to play there. Then on the 30th, uh, the VIP Lounge is hosting Beyond the City's pre-party, playing mm. at that as well. Um, September, the 6th of September, there's a whole mix called, there's, a, there's an event called Unity, which I really like because it's Ooh. three event companies that are collabing with each other to make like the best of, you know, the best of all the scenes. And yeah. then uh, otherwise, yeah, that's, those are my most recent ones. There's a, a ton more that are on my stories and stuff that you can check out <laughs> of events that I'm playing. But um, yeah, that's about it, my mix. And then uh, also watch out for... Watch out for energy and glass walls, which are being released by Deepfoot Records in oh, the near future. That's really awesome, man. 100%. So lastly, um, and now that we're ending the show, I first want to say thank you so much for being on it. Um, you really are awesome. And there was quite a intense battle that you had there with uh, Jethro last Jethro. year. Jethro. Yeah, yeah, congrats to Jethro, man. Yo, yeah, man, that no, was it's... insane. It was like five, what, five votes? Yeah, five votes. Yeah, but Crazy, it was yeah. insane. But like, it, was, was... it wasn't like it was low boy. Yeah, yeah like exactly. 400 and something, yeah. Yeah, no, it was, yeah. it was really, I was like sitting there with my phone for half an hour just making sure that you guys are like, like how tight things were and all of that. <laughs> but, yeah. Sure, yeah. So, um, do you have a question that you'd like to ask your fans? Um, have you got your tickets yet? That's all I can say. <laughs> tickets for the events oh, yeah, coming guys, up. Have you got there's, your there's a, there's a, yeah, there's a whole ton of events coming up. This is probably going to be one of the, the most incredible holidays coming up so far with events. Oh, there's one thing I forgot to club, uh, to plug and that's um what one of the projects i'm doing is uh, a huge collaboration of mixes from artists in pe so there's c munich there's uh robin Mooney's chad daniels tavesh governor uh liam Shambif there's basically all of the djs i could find in pe yeah. we met i'm making a collab mix so each of them is sending me a snippet and yeah. in december i'm gonna release this mega mix of just PE, you know, just oh, yes. showcasing what we got. And uh, yeah, that's going to be probably one of the biggest projects that I've ever uh, oh, done yeah. myself. So I can't, that's I'm really so awesome. excited for that. Yeah. Yeah, yes. Very well excited. done on yeah. that. And well done for trying to pull that off. That's going to be so epic. For sure, I'm, yeah. I'm definitely going to be like one of the first team to listen to it. <laughs> well, 100%. Yeah, that yeah. Mix, I could be one of the first team. For sure. Yeah, as soon as it's done, I'll, I'll plug festivals for you, for sure. Hell yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. So for everyone that has been tuning in and that is going to be watching this later, this video will be available on our IGTV segments later on in the week. And also this video together with the mix that Charles has sent us will be available on our YouTube. So check it out, subscribe, and you guys will always be in touch with our latest The Groove podcast segments that we have. Don't forget to catch us again on Monday where you'll be tuning in with G Chord this time. And yeah, you'll be chatting to one of the DJs that we've previously featured. Thank you so much, Chelsea, for being here. Cool, Julie. no problem. Thanks for having okay. me. Yeah, I just want to say thanks to everyone who tuned in to come watch and all the comments that I saw scrolling up. Always nice to see the love. You know, I appreciate all of you guys. Thanks so much. Hell yeah, guys. And definitely tuning in cool. again soon, man. Cheers, man. For sure. Cheers, cheers. Go well. You too. Cheers. You're listening to The Groove. Festivals for You weekly podcast where we bring the underground music scene to you.
Hello, hello, and welcome back to another amazing episode of The Groove. Except today, we've got something different in store for you guys. So, as mentioned before in our Instagram post, you'll now be tuning in with me, Sheldon, every single Thursday for our weekly top DJ segment. Today, we are showcasing our week 32 top DJ named Salso Fabri and his mix that he has given us. First up, we have All I Need from Avi Subban and Pierre Johnson, followed by Escape from Tima OEV featuring Jay Something. Tune in and enjoy the lacquer tunes, guys. All I need is a cup of water and something in the morning. Catch me. 
Specificity you would find it in simplicity, motion, truth. It's like life, falling in love in it, infinite, 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 infinite,
Hey guys, you just listened to the first half of this awesome mix. Uh, the last two tracks you listened to was Deja Vu from FKA Mash featuring Lazarus Man, which was then followed by The Rapture Part 2 from And Me. Next up is Everything from Pierre Johnson and Souks, which is then followed by Forbidden from DW Sun featuring SIO. Hope you enjoy the rest of this mix. stuff set up to help you waste your time social media tv video games right whatever it's a it's distraction And I lost 
Billy from Musiv Music and Pierre Johnson, which was then followed by Nobody Else from DW Sun featuring SIO. We just want to thank you all for taking the time and listening to this awesome mix. And we hope to catch you guys next week, Monday and Thursday, where we will be carrying on with the podcast segment. Have a great day further guys and definitely catch us on our website festivals for you that's the number four and the letter u.coza. Cheers guys, have a great day.